Uh, now to a debate that's been rumbling on for many months, uh, but Culture Secretary Oliver Dowden himself has now entered it. He's accused a London hospital, Guy's, of pandering to wokery after it decided to remove a statue of Thomas Guy because of his links to uh, slavery. Uh, Mr Dowden criticised uh, Guy's and Tommy's foundation for its, but they're the people who run it, uh, for its plans to remove the 18th century sculpture of Thomas Guy. Black Lives Matter protesters boarded up the statue last year and despite a public consultation overwhelmingly saying that the statue should remain in place, uh, that foundation has decided to remove it from its main forecourt in central London. Well, I was standing in for Colin Brazier uh, last week uh, when this story broke and we had an initial conversation with Andrew Doyle, uh, GB News presenter and host of Free Speech Nation. And I'm delighted to say, despite it being Saturday, he agreed there, you see, dressed down slightly because it's Saturday, but he said, no, I do want to speak about this. Hey, how significant is it or is it just posing for Dowden as culture secretary to get involved in this argument? I think it's quite significant because politicians often stay out of these particularly sensitive issues. Um, however, on the other side, the language that he's chosen to use may not be helpful because he said pandering to wokery. What inevitably, what's going to happen now is he'll be accused of uh, uh, starting or, or um, exacerbating a culture war because he's used the phrase wokery. Actually, it could have been done in a much more elegant way. If you look at when Emmanuel Macron made a statement about why the French government will not be removing statues that relate to their colonial past, it was done in a very elegant way and it didn't use these kind of colloquialisms that r rile people up and, uh, and you know rub them up the wrong way. Uh, but it is good, I think, that politicians are saying this, because oftentimes when you have these culture warriors who are pushing for these changes to the cultural landscape and to society in general, uh, a lot of people are afraid to tackle them for fear of being accused of all sorts of things. In this case, uh, of course, if you say that it's not a good idea to remove statues in this way, uh, you're often accused of racism uh, and a politician who's accused of racism is in a very difficult position. So in a sense, it is reassuring that he's saying something. I just I think it might have been, I suppose, more elegantly phrased. I mean, it also does beg an issue, and I, I genuinely don't know what your thoughts on this are, because although we've discussed many, many things over the last few weeks, uh, this is one that I don't think we've discussed, and that is the right of a body like the uh, Tommy and Guy's Foundation uh, to make decisions. So, you know, they have powers, and they, in a sense, they shouldn't be told by ministers what to do or what not to do, because that's a part of our free society. That is true. However, uh, in, in looking into this, it looks as though they they may not even get permission to remove the statue anyway because it is grade two listed. So they have their hands are tied to a degree, <laughs> but they are they are making these decisions. However, uh, against what the public want. I mean, as you pointed out yeah. yourself, there was a public consultation. So yeah, I suppose you have a point as far as politicians shouldn't necessarily get involved in what is a private affair. But the people themselves, the, the foundation themselves, did in fact say to the public, what do you think about this? They got over 3,000 responses, 75% of which said, keep the statue where it is. And it's interesting that the uh, chief executive of the foundation has said uh, that we, need, we have a, a sort of duty of care to our ethnic minority patients which is a very patronizing thing to say, because the idea that ethnic minority people don't understand that this is a historical artifact, that this is not a celebration of, of slavery. That's not why the statue is there. It isn't there to, to celebrate his investment in the South Sea Company. Uh, the reason why the statue of Thomas Guy is there is to commemorate the founding of the hospital in 1721, which was a particularly important foundation because of course it, it helped prioritize uh, the poor. Um, so, th and, and, and the idea that, that people don't understand this is a nonsense, as, as poll after poll shows, people are not for, generally, this idea of eliminating elements of the past that we find unpalatable. We all instinctively know that it smacks of historical revisionism, which is always a little bit uncomfortable. But most of us would rather have an awareness and an, an acknowledgement of, of history. Uh, by all means, we should educate people better about what happened, what the, what the South Sea Company did, the trafficking of slaves, uh, the, the, the supplying of slaves to, to, to um, plantations in South America, which is, which is that they're involved with, all of that kind of thing. You know, by all means, let's talk about that. Yeah, I, I think more education about that is, is absolutely fantastic. Mm. But I think just eliminating any remnants of, of our history uh, is it, actually is a problem because it, it, it's not the way to tackle or confront or, or discuss it. 
Final point, and it, it flows from that, and I agree 100% with you, but and we were previous conversation was in the context of reclaiming history, a group of academics, mm. you know, we're trying to pretend these things don't exist. I mean, in a sense, if there is a bleak aspect of the story to be told, um, and Cecil Rhodes and the Rhodes Scholarship is an example. There were, there were bad things in the past, there's no doubt about it, but it, it strikes me to, to have... Symbols, pictures, stories, statues, whatever you like of these people, is an invitation to discover, discuss and understand both the good and the bad. If you take them away, it's Orwellian. It's like trying to pretend they didn't ever exist. Yeah, I was talking to a teacher about this. There's a statue of a slaver that he often takes his pupils to see to start the conversation, that statue has now been earmarked for removal. And he, he says that what he does is he takes the class there and that's the starting point of the discussion. Uh, it, and the children fully understand why the statue is there, and what, what the original context in which it was erected. Um, and so we have a very kind of anachronistic way of looking at these statues now. We're seeing them very much through the prism of the current concerns at the moment uh, it, since the, the, the Black Lives Matter protests of last year. But these statues are about something different. They're about acknowledging the good and bad of our history and, and, and not trying to pretend that they didn't happen. As you say, it, it, it's, it strikes us as a, a little bit Orwellian.